Hi everyone, my name is Diasha and in today's lesson we will apply what we have learned about acids and bases in this series so far by learning more about substances found in a home. By the end of this lesson you should be able to classify common substances as acids or bases, explain how soap works and follow a set of instructions to make soap. Let's start in the kitchen. Water is probably the most important chemical on earth. In our previous lesson we showed how water molecules interact together to form a very small number of hydroxide ions and the same number of hydronium ions. We used this theory to show why water is actually neutral with a pH of 7. Do you remember how we defined an acid and a base? Yes, an acid is a proton donor and a base is a proton acceptor. Now in this kitchen we are fortunate to have a supply of running water. According to a UN 2002 human development report, 1.1 billion people do not have access to clean drinking water. The result of this is that preventable water related diseases kill between 10,000 and 20,000 children every day in poor countries. In response to this report, delegates at the Earth Summit held in Johannesburg in 2002 pledged to half the proportion of people in the world who do not have access to clean drinking water by 2015. The South African government has set its own target of providing clean water and sanitation to all South Africans by 2008. So far, huge strides have been made towards achieving this target, having already provided access to clean water for more than 7 million of the poorest people since 1994. We do, however, live in a dry country and need to look after our water. Try not to waste it and never pollute it. Polluted water is not safe to drink or use in the home. It needs to be treated first. The reason for this is that many types of bacteria can be carried in water and these can spread diseases such as cholera. If you are not sure if your water is safe to drink, how can you treat it? Well, even if the water looks clean, it may not be safe. We need to kill any bacteria that may be carrying disease. A safe and simple way to do this is to add a small amount of chlorine bleach. Now of course, bleach is not only used to clean water and surfaces in the home, but it is also used when you want to remove stains from clothes. The reason this works is because the active ingredients in bleach form hypochlorous acid HOCl. This is a weak acid that is not very stable but reacts easily with bacteria or organic material. Most stains come from organic sources like food or plant material. The hypochlorous acid reacts with these materials releasing oxygen and hydrochloric acid. The organic material is then changed too and forms soluble products that can be washed away in the water. Since we are talking about washing, what sort of substance is soap? Let's test it using some universal indicator paper. I'm dropping some water on a bar of soap and now I'll test it with the indicator. Notice the color of the indicator turns green. This means that the soap is close to being neutral but is made from alkalis. Soap has been made for many years by boiling animal fat with wood ash. The wood ash contained a base. When these substances combined, an interesting sort of molecule was formed. The one end of the molecule, coming from the fat, is very similar to oil. The other end of the molecule carries a charge, like an ionic compound. The reason soap works is because of these two different ends of the molecule. Today, instead of using animal fat, we can make soap using more pleasant smelling oils and boiling these with sodium hydroxide. A typical example used in soaps is sodium stearate. This has a formula of CH3, CH2 16 times, CO2 minus, 
in A+. At the end of this lesson, I will give you a recipe to make soap. But for now, let's try and find out how soap actually works. Not all dirt dissolves in water, particularly not oily, greasy dirt. Now this type of substance will dissolve in the organic end of the soap molecule, since fats and oils mix easily. The other end of the soap molecule, where the ionic charges are, dissolves easily in water. In this way, soap molecules are able to hook fat and grease and help them dissolve in water. Now, drain cleaners made with sodium hydroxide use a similar principle. Let's test this drain cleaner here. You can see that it dissolves easily in water. and forms a very alkali solution with a pH of 11,29. Strong alkalis are extremely dangerous. Most people think that only acids are corrosive, but in fact, these alkalis are even more dangerous. So we must be very careful when working with them. If a drain is blocked by grease and fatty deposits, we can pour this caustic soda down the drain and then add boiling water. The fatty material will react with the sodium hydroxide to form soap. This can then be washed away in the water. This same principle explains why one of the characteristics of bases is that they have a soapy feel. Can you think why this is so? When you touch a base, you have a small amount of grease on your skin. The base will combine with this grease to form soap. This gives the base its slimy feel. Now before we end this lesson, I want to look at what happens after you've finished washing up. Do you see the scum or ring around the basin? You have noticed this in the bath too. This is a deposit formed when the water has a high concentration of calcium salts in them. This type of water is called hard water. Water that has a low concentration of calcium salts is called soft water. The addition of salts to water can cause the pH to change and this is why water treatment is actually quite a complex process. The only way to know what is happening is to test the water regularly. This is done at plants set up to treat water but it is also done when water is used in swimming pools. Swimming is an Olympic sport that is growing in popularity. It is a healthy exercise and can be a lot of fun. Remember though that if you do not know how to swim, it can be extremely dangerous without supervision as drowning accidents are very common. There are many programs in place however to teach more people to swim and enjoy being in the water without fear of drowning. Now, swimming would not be safe unless the water in the swimming pool was tested regularly. After testing the water, it can be treated with acid or chlorine. This will prevent the growth of algae and bacteria. But the pH levels cannot be allowed to get too low. Otherwise, swimmers will find that their eyes burn and the pipes will be corroded by the acid. This will cause brown stains of iron to appear in the pool. When the water is tested, the amount of dissolved salts due to the hardness or softness of the water, needs to be monitored too. These salts contribute to the total alkalinity of the water. By careful testing and monitoring, the water in a pool can be kept clean and safe. Here's the recipe for making soap. Our ingredients are 60 grams of sodium hydroxide or caustic soda, 500 milliliters cooking oil, 250 milliliters of water, and 20 milliliters of lemon juice. Step 1. Pour the water into a large glass bowl. Step 2. Add sodium hydroxide to the water slowly. Stir with a wooden spoon until the solute has dissolved. This reaction releases heat, so be very careful. 
Step 3. Add the cooking oil to the sodium hydroxide and continue to stir. The mixture will start to thicken. Step 4. Add lemon juice to neutralize unreacted sodium hydroxide. Step 5. Pour the mixture into molds and allow to sit in a cool place. This is a basic soap that does not get very hard. You can add fragrances and color at the same time as adding lemon juice. You may want to try using different oils or even melting butter or fat. Follow these steps carefully and experiment to make different types of soap. Now, in our next lesson, we'll turn our attention to food as we explore more about acids and bases at home. Until then, goodbye. Yeah.